guys, Dave here, Dave's LFC Chats, and I've got a legend on the line from Liverpool Hotel Tia Ragnald Lund Asnes, is it? Am I correct? Asnes, yeah, but Ragnald was perfect. Hello. Oh. <laughs> I used to love AHA when I was young. AHA were one of my favourite bands from Norway. So. Well, a lot of people say I look like Agneta in ABBA, so there you go. Ooh. Oh, very nice. What a compliment, by the way. I can <laughs> take a, that one anytime. <laughs> that's a big compliment. Okay, Ragnall. Obviously, Hotel Tia Anfield Road. What a what a gem of a hotel. It's 200 yards away from Anfield. You could throw a stone and it would hit Anfield. That's how close we are. It's unbelievable. I know it's it's uh, a dream coming true for us. We're a, a bunch of uh, big reds who've been dreaming about having a place to meet, basically like a family friendly place to meet. Because yeah. before I moved to Liverpool, I would bring my kids over all the time. I have a girl and a boy. They are marinated in Liverpool Football Club, obviously, because I've dragged them around everywhere when I've been yeah. writing my books uh, for LFC and when I've been touring with all the ex-players. So my kids had no choice. But, you know, bringing your kids to the game, and I'm sure a lot of you watching this now know, you know, the pubs at Anfield on match days, they're a bit cramped. So you, you, your kids just st- standing like this one yeah. the matches on. So we decided we need to have a spacious, family-friendly, kid-friendly place Built Hotel Tia with a beautiful um, football pitch at the end of a huge garden yeah. for kids. And it's just lovely, you know, to see all these kids get along. They don't even speak the same language. We have people from literally all over the world meeting there. A thousand at a time, actually, um, in this huge beer garden. And it's just amazing to see all these friendships being built, just like we dreamt of. Yeah, I was over um, there at, in the 5th of October, the, the, the Leicester City weekend. And I was out the back at the Carlsberg beer garden that you have. Yes. And I think you had Jamie. You had Jamie Webster. Obviously, he's a, a fan favorite there. He's always there. But uh, oh Paul yeah, he Aldo, plays. Aldo, Aldo and Sammy Hippie. Sammy, Sammy Hippie's birthday, I think it was that day. Yeah, that's right. Well, the following day, but we sang Sammy's uh, song on the veranda. And this is actually the second year in a row Sammy's been in for his birthday. I think that's a pretty cool surprise and, yeah. and, and a wonderful tradition for us in Hotel Tia. We have a lot of ex-players just popping in. They just feel like a part of the furniture, I think. Um, it's just great. You know, Bruce Grobelar, he's our godfather. Yeah. He cut the ribbon in April a year and a half ago. Um, and then we always do pre-match, legend pre-match um, in our beautiful players' lounge, this Victorian players' lounge, with 50 people before the game, with food and free bars and stuff, and then there's wow. always a legend in for that. So it's just one of those. It's uh, definitely a place to go if you if you want to um, yeah. bump into one of the big heroes yeah. of the club. I, wa- I walked in one day and I bumped into uh, a Jamie Webster, two Sammy Hippia, three Phil Neal, four Bruce Grubbler, <laughs> five John Aldridge. I was like this. What the hell is going on? You picked a good day. I can hear that. <laughs> but, it, but it's not, it's not um, unusual, you know, and, and we're very proud of that. You know, both Targi Hursta, one of the other of the owners, he lives in Anfield Road. He's been living there, a Norwegian, living there for, I think, 16 or 17 years. He goes to every match home and away. He hasn't mitch, missed one uh, game home and away for Liverpool wow. for over 10 years. We're talking 800 and... 30-something uh, oh consecutive games, Big Red. He's been working with the legends over so many years. I have throughout my book. So we have a lot of friends between us. And uh, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's just wonderful that they also like to hang out with us. Do you know what it is as well? I know what it's about. It. It's very friendly. Obviously, it's family uh, orientated as well. And it's Liverpool to me is like a family anyway. I mean, oh, yeah. fans, players, the whole bloody lot of it. It's just one big family, maybe more than any other club in the world. And I mean, you've obviously continued that with Hotel Tia. That's I told the concept, you know, it's brilliant. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And that's why we wanted this this place to meet because for me, all these friends are made all over the world through Liverpool Football Club. It's just incredible. Every time you meet up, no matter you know what we work with, where we're from, what religion we have or not yeah. have, you know, what jobs we have, how much money we have in the bank, it doesn't matter. In in Liverpool Football Club and at Hotel Tia, it doesn't matter who you are or what you are. You're just there as a part of the family. And yeah. um, I think that's probably the most beautiful thing about being a football fan, to be fair. Yeah, that's probably why I also think Jamie Webster is so popular. Jamie is a, is a great friend of us in Hotel Tia and he plays, as you say, 
every whole match. He plays yeah. with two or three hours before the match every single time, except for <laughs> Napoli, where he's in Australia. So if any Australian fans are uh, wow. watching this, you know, uh, Jamie's coming. He's on his way. Um, so, um, yeah, it's, it's just great to share all these experiences. And when I stand on the veranda with Jamie when he plays um, and look out on this yeah. ocean of reds yeah. and everyone sing together, I just think, wow, look wow. at all the smiley faces yeah. and all these happy people. And we, we made this. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. We love it. But it's hard work. Don't get me wrong. It's oh, not, well, it's not flying this. like this on match days um, crazy. every day. Crazy, <laughs> so. crazy. <laughs> Do you know what? Did Jamie Webster start out in Hotel Tia doing a few gigs? Is that right or, or am I wrong? Jamie started with something called Boss Nights. Um, and then we've had um, one of these boss events we've had at Hotel Tia. And it's called Boss Kids. So we did that. Uh, I think it was maybe, if I'm remembering right, the first Boss Kids event. But I might remember wrongly. But it was such a success with with hundreds and hundreds of uh, local kids yeah. coming along to this event. Um, but Jamie's been playing since we opened, basically. Um, he's a great mate with uh, many of us because he travels to all the away games and so do um some of us from Hotel T as well. So we've known Jamie for years. So we're just mates, basically. And and um, he's helping us out and we're helping him out. And, and it's a brilliant, pretty brilliant. cool combo. <laughs> yeah, what, so what, a, what, a, what a connection or what a, what a combination, as they say. I know. It all. And Jamie is such a, um, a good football pundit as well. We've just discovered as we have uh, started now. Um, our own podcast yeah, yeah it's so yeah. much fun we've only done 10 episodes but it's it's always jamie webstrong and david fairclough and uh, james pierce as many will know as a yeah. super lfc correspondent and myself and then we throw in a few guests and and jamie that yeah that was why i actually started talking about jamie again jamie is probably so popular because he's just one of the lads he's just so grounded even now he is experienced flying uh you know all this demand from all over the world but he's just that same grounded one of the lads um he doesn't think he's better or worse or any, than anyone else he's just so friendly and level-headed and i think that's probably why he represents so much of what liverpool football club and the fans stand for you know yeah. that one family that doesn't matter you know just, just one of the lads celebrity hasn't gone to his head is that what you're telling me i know and, and you've got to listen Listen to, to, to him, guys, if you watch this and, and if you're into the podcast, go, check out LFC Talk at Hotel Tia because Jamie is such a pleasure to listen to and he's, he's really analytic and passionate when he talks football with us. So yeah, tune that, in. It's brilliant. And obviously James Pierce, he used to work for the Liverpool Echo and he moved to the Athletic, I think, now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So now he gets to go in depth which is lovely. In the Echo, I think he used to have to do like five or six pieces a day, which is just insane. Um, I'm a journalist myself, and I'm just thinking, whoa, that's stressful. And now we can, you know, dwell at one or maybe two stories a week and really sort of dig into them and, and do bigger pieces in depth. So he's loving it. And then, of course, uh, uh, chatting with us at, at the podcast. And you also have super sub, David Fairclough, the super sub. Huh? I know. Him him, and Aldo are probably Aldo. two of the best pundits, I would say, out of all the uh, former players. I don't want to yeah. step on anyone's toes because I work with so many of them. But David has got, he's so bright and he's got this really good analytic mind and and at the same time, he can he can travel so much back and and bring in all these uh, fantastic stories from the glorious yeah. past as well, and 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 see parallels and and compare the different successful times and what worked then and what's also working now and vice versa. And it's um it's fantastic to listen to him. No, but I mean it really is brilliant. And as I say, I went off to Liverpool recently, and I came into Hotel T because I was actually staying on the road. There's, there's the Anfield B and B. It's about four or five doors up from you. All right, yeah, there's quite a few in that street, you know, that end yeah. where the bus comes, you know, that last yeah. bend. We are right at that last bend before the Anfield, um, Anfield ground, basically. Um, and that piece of the street of Anfield used to be where all the posh people lived. <laughs> um, our hotel, that was where the minister, the priest lived. 
Um, and uh, just across the road, slightly across the road, maybe where you stayed even, uh, was where the doctor lived. You had the headmaster yeah. just across the road. So this was really, really posh. But then eventually um, that last house uh, on the on the left before you hit the container, LFC TV container. Yeah, that, old one, yeah. 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 that house was um, turned into a place for... Um, for a convict on trial so basically what? yeah i know <laughs> and that's when hell broke loose apparently in that street oh. and uh, yeah it was pretty crazy for a few years now it's obviously a posh and not well i wouldn't i wouldn't go as far as posh but um um it's it's a lot better again <laughs> but you, there you go some history you're, you're perfectly <laughs> located i mean you couldn't get a better location i mean you have the mural the trent mural literally across the road yeah, and it's it's just so wonderful on match days, you know, how you can just wander over, stay at ours, sleep there, just go down. If if there's a if there's a line uh, for the loo, you can just pop up to your room. <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant. <laughs> and then you, it's very hard to get in though. I'd say you're always sold out at match day. Yeah, I'll be sold out. I'll yeah. Talk to you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. It's uh, it's very popular. I think I think most of the rooms for match days sold out in in Premier League sold out in in mid June when the fixture list came out, which is fantastic. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. yeah. So just before we go, what is the connection in your mind? Do you think with the Norwegian, the Scandinavian connection with, with Liverpool Football Club? Well, what's that all about? Do you think in your mind? Well, it's um, I studied this when I wrote my first book on the Liverpool supporters. I spent three years really understanding why this connection with Norway and Scandinavia yeah. and, and Liverpool was so massive. And the thing is, um, back in, and we were traveling all the way back to the uh, 60s, early 60s, Norway, Sweden and Denmark went together, the, the three state broadcasters like BBC in England, yeah. and they decided to start this betting game and where they, they used English football. And um, they work with ITV, so that's based in this like northwest part of, of um, England, to get camera equipment and stuff. And they started broadcasting one live game every three o'clock game every Saturday, which was four o'clock in Norway, where everyone was off. It was only one TV channel. So if you wanted to watch anything at that particular time, it was a live football game from and from sorry from England, and yeah. a lot of the time because ITV was based around close to Liverpool, Liverpool was was picked as one of the teams playing, and also because Liverpool throughout the seventies into the eighties <laughs> were the best team. So yeah. Yeah. so and that made so many Norwegians fall in love with this uh, this uh, red team. You know, so many people told me it was the red shirts. Um, it was Kevin Keegan with the ball sort of glued to his legs you know um, it was this uncompromised tough high tempo game that Norwegian football hadn't seen before you know Sweden and Denmark as much as they were a part of this too for, uh, Liverpool uh, didn't sort of uh, branch out as massively in Denmark and Sweden because Denmark and Sweden had really good football themselves you know they've right, yeah. done well in the World Cup both of them Sweden yeah. as well has got uh, are like massive in ice um uh, ice hockey so um for norway we just fell in love with this crazy beautiful passionate game and uh, and as we know you know if your parents is crazy about the football team uh, you your pass, kids will be. You? Your kids will be. As, as i've done with my kids i've marinated them so uh, there you go i have a great story actually i was over for the very last game of the season at wolves the last game the last season yeah, and, um, well, the day that was, I, by the way. I had to fly to Manchester from Dublin, where I am in Ireland. I, ha- I couldn't fly into Liverpool because I left it so late. There was no flights. Yeah. So I had to fly to Manchester. So I flew to Manchester on a Friday night. And I was in the airport and I was going to get a taxi from Manchester because I was on my own. It was late to Liverpool. It would have cost about 80 sterling. And this Manchester mank uh, taxi driver tipped me on the shoulder and goes, Do you see those three guys over there? They're going to Liverpool today. You look like you're going to Liverpool. I says, I am. Three Norwegian guys, right? <laughs> so the three of us are sitting in the back of the taxi drinking bottles of beer oh, all the way from Manchester to Liverpool, <laughs> talking about Norway, talking about Ireland, talking about Liverpool. It was unbelievable. Oh, it was brilliant. That's just what it's all about, eh? Meeting yeah. new mates, um, yeah. sharing passion and, and, uh, and what a season we are right in the middle of for all those new and old mates, the red mates around the world. It's unbelievable. 
Well, uh, it's an absolute pleasure talking to you. I hope to see you again when I'm in Liverpool. I definitely will go down to the hotel to you because you serve a lovely beer there as well, by the way. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I forgot to tell you this day, though. When you're over next time, you have to remember we do um, quizzes, LFC quizzes on Fridays, oh, yeah. every Friday yeah. before home matches um, with either Peter Hooten from the farm or George Sefton, the voice of Anfield, or James Pearce is one of the quiz masters. Oh. So we always do that. And another thing that people don't know that we're trying to get out there now is that we do free pre- or post-match uh, shows with a, a Liverpool a legend. legend. A legend. So if the match is on, on Saturday, that's happening 2 o'clock on Sunday. Or if the match is on Sunday, yeah. it happens 2 o'clock on Saturdays. And I mean, that's free for everyone. Everyone can come in because in Hotel Theo, we believe in giving back and not yeah. everyone costing a fortune because so many of us, well, not me anymore because I've ripped up my family's fruits and planted them down here in Liverpool. But for most of us, you know, it costs a lot to travel to the games. And yeah. it's great if some high quality experiences uh, with Liverpool Football Club could be free. So. Welcome do, you know, back. do you know another thing just before we go? Every time I think of Hotel Tia, I always think of the jerseys, the, the football, the old Liverpool jerseys you have like in like in, in the wall. Like, where on earth did you just get them? Like, some of them are like, I, I was talking very about special. Phil Neal. Phil Neal was telling me that there's two or three jerseys there. Liverpool Football Club don't even have them. They, they like they don't have yeah. them. Yeah. Right now we have on display the oldest existing away shirt for Liverpool that, that we know of from the 1930s. We have Steven Gerrard's full debut shirt. We've got Bruce Grobler's spaghetti leg shirts from Rome. Yeah, yeah. We've got Roger Hunt's shirt. They're all, you know, massive games, massive players throughout Liverpool Football Club's journey. And that's thanks to Targi again, who's been an avid collector over, over so many years. And on top of that, we also have like a, a special... A collection of away shirts now uh, from something called bloody greed sh- greedy shirts this <laughs> is turning into a into a book so so that's on display for us now around this beautiful shuffleboard we have so yeah. and i mean we've got the most famous door from anfield from the old the main red door, the red door the iconic yeah, yeah place tunnel door that's there wow. we, won, we won the bid over ceo of liverpool peter moore <laughs> which yeah, is peter pretty moore, cool. yeah this means more. <laughs> so, sorry, Peter. Um, no, and we've, got, we've got the old manager bench um, where, you know, Benitez and, and Klopp and, yeah. and Daglish and even Roy Hodgson's been. Oh, no, don't mention it. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got, you know, an old barrier from the cop, an original barrier. Up and against the bar. Up against the bar. Yeah. yeah, that's like yeah. the framework of the bar. We've got one of the oldest turnstiles. We can just go on and on. So it's, it's basically, our, our bar is like a, a museum and it's proper stuff in there. Yeah, it's a genuine original stuff. I'll tell you what, what, what are the chances of getting Jamie Webster to ring me <laughs> for a show? Mention well, I am sure he can uh, can uh, help you out. But he's, as I said, uh, on the other side of the world right now. So he's I in Australia, yeah. He's yeah. on his way, yeah. Yeah, yeah, unbelievably. He really has come on. Anyway. Thank you very much, Ragnall. I won't keep you much longer. You take care. Hope to see you soon. And it's been great. Thank you very much. And thank you so much for having me. And welcome back to Hotel Tia soon. No problem. Bye.